it was very nice to see you in the morning okay. again in the morning and you are most welcome and we it are in peace nice village I am in Peace Village. In fact, yes. today is Taliban's 70th birthday. So she's celebrating was, uh, Thursday, yeah. auspicious day, right? Yes, the auspicious day. Yeah. Thank you. So, so I stuff. don't see any places, but you get to them. But that's okay. Can and I'm assuming everyone can hear okay. Yeah. So yes. Now, can you confirm everyone can can read your... this, Merle? It's beautiful. Yes, everybody read. We sent them in earlier, so they all. You all can keep your uh, Zoom on. But just be stable so sister can communicate to you. It's very nice to see your faces. Yes. And some are on uh, YouTube, so they, you cannot see them, but there are many in that also. Okay, so good morning. Happy Sakuruwar to each of you. <clears throat> Good morning. Happy to have this time Shanti. with you. Om Shanti. So you may not Om know Shanti. me. Om I don't Shanti. know how many of you are. Om Shanti. Um, but my name is Judy. I, I live in Peace Village. And, um, you know, a lot of the things I do are on the international service field, so we may not have bumped into each other, but I'm very happy to meet you this morning. And isn't this an amazing Merle? Um, July 1970, and Baba is saying, you don't need to leave your home to serve. I mean, it's like he's speaking to us this morning. So um, what I'd like to do is talk through a little bit of it and then do a little bit of practice with you. Um, do you usually do questions, each of them, or do you not usually do that? Yeah. Again. Yes, yeah, we okay. definitely. Okay. All right, so I'll move through it. If you have a question in the middle, I'm fine with you interrupting me. Um, but I'll leave time and check in with you periodically because it's a very powerful Merle. I've probably read it eight or ten times by now. There we go. Um, so... This is a Merle where Baba starts out asking us about being, about when we looked at Shaktis, when we looked at the idols of Shaktis, what did we see? And he said, we saw two things. We saw love and we saw power. And he's asking us, he's saying, do you consider yourself to be a Shakti? And of course we all would say, Yes, <laughs> yes, we do. And he said, well, the love is obvious. You're very loving. But he said, the power is a little incognito. So he begins to explain what is power. And the way he explains it is that we can destroy something, that a Shakti can destroy something in one second. Yes, they can love immediately. I think when Dottie's, when we, when a daddy walked into a room where we were, we immediately felt love, right? But did, but the power part 
what is it that we destroy in one second? So we have to be able to destroy something like this. So it would be, we could destroy negative thoughts. We could destroy bad memories. We could destroy um, bad feelings, feelings of fear, feelings of anxiety. We could destroy negative feelings we have for someone else. Jealousy, competition, disappointment, all of that. So, and, and we work on those things, all of us, I'm sure. You know, if we have a bad feeling about someone, we, we try to eliminate that bad feeling. But can we do it in a second? You know, if a bad memory comes up or a difficult person comes in front of us, can we eliminate our feeling about that person like this and return to that loving place? That's what he's saying that a Shakti can do. And um, he said, he calls this stage imperishable. So he's saying when we can maintain this stage, we are in our, basically our soul conscious stage, our imperishable stage. And he said, this is what we're aiming for, to be able to maintain that. So he gave us a little test he said, I want you to ask yourself how many of my thoughts are successful and how many of my thoughts are unsuccessful. So when you think about a successful thought, this is a thought that raises you up, right? And an unsuccessful thought brings you down. So when I was playing with this, I had this image of a hot air balloon. Have you ever seen those big balloons that people ride in? They have basket underneath them and they rise up and and um, there's usually an operator, there's a captain that's in the basket underneath and he's got a big torch and he heats up the air in the balloon and when he heats the air up, the balloon rises. And then when they wanna bring the balloon down, they let the air cool and then they come down, right? So they move around like this, rising up and coming down. So I did a little test with myself. I thought, all right, Every time I have a successful thought, this hot air balloon in my mind will rise up. And every time I have an unsuccessful thought, it'll come down. So I started out very well. I was thinking about um, how, you know, progress, spiritual progress. And then I really felt, you know, I've been working on one particular thing. And I thought, you know, it's going pretty well. I, I really see progress here. So my balloon was up. And then I saw out of the corner of my eye a mouse in my house. So the balloon came crashing down to the ground. And the more I thought about the mouse, I thought, I don't think it was, it wasn't a little mouse, it was a big mouse. In fact, the more I thought about it, I thought, I think it was a rat. So I had completely terrified myself so that I couldn't even sleep. So now my balloon is down on the ground. Now later when I caught this mouse, it was not a rat, it was, right? But what your mind can do to bring you down, make you afraid, etc. So then I began working on my mind again. I was thinking loving thoughts of Daddy Janky, I considered her my good friend, like Pita Ben did, does, I'm sure, and how much, how lucky to have time with her and how, how lucky we all were to have her and so up goes my balloon, right? Successful thought, wonderful, wonderful sustenance from this soul. And I'm going along with my balloon up in the air and then I get a text on my phone that says credit card fraud. Did you charge $1,300 to some place called Big Lots? <sighs> right, down comes my balloon. No, I didn't charge this. Throw away your card, we'll send you a new one. So 
this is what happens inside of us, right? We're up and then we're down. And then we're back up and then we're down. And what Baba is saying to us is this is not power. So to cultivate power is to be able in a second to invoke the powerful thought that you need, the thought of God's love, the thought of who's teaching us, the thought of who you really are, the thought of what you're able to do, whatever it is that gives you that sense of spiritual confidence and to hold that stage so that no matter what happens, you're still there. You're not gonna go fluctuating up and down. So I want you to, I'm giving you my balloon image for you to use. See how, see how it goes for you, if you can keep your balloon aloft, or if you find yourself with your balloon going up and down. It's tricky, isn't it? Because what we're good, when things are good, we are good. But when things get challenging, like they are now, when people get sick or we're afraid they're going to get sick or someone's out of a job or whatever, we can find that our, our power goes with that. And so what Baba is saying to us is at this time, you can't let that happen. At this time, you have to be able to sustain your power no matter what. So that's, that's the first kind of practice that he's given us. And uh, he gave us another practice about power. And I thought we might practice this one together. So he said, well, first he told us there should be no need for you to go anywhere. This is good news, right? Because, because none of us is going anywhere. He said, you can bring souls in front of you by attracting them with your pure thoughts. There's no need to go anywhere physically and make effort. So I thought we should practice this. So you understand the practice, right? We are going to bring souls in front of us. We're gonna start with one soul. And we're gonna bring this soul in front of us because we can't get in the car and drive and see them anyway. So we're gonna bring this soul in front of us to serve them. So I want you, before we start, I want you to think of someone who you would like to serve. You wanna serve them with courage. You wanna serve them with peace. You wanna serve them with love or whatever. I would say better for this not to be someone too close to you because if you have a little bit of attachment, it's going to be harder, all right? So pick someone who's not too close. Like don't pick your daughter you know, or your, or your son-in-law or don't pick someone too close. Pick somebody a little, bit, a little bit distant. Now, I want you to uh, sit, sit comfortably and I want you to go inside. So forget that you're sitting and watching a computer and forget that I'm talking with you from New York. And just instead, turn your attention inside, turn your face inside and come to a stillness, a real stillness. Your heart is completely peaceful. There's no disturbance in your heart. Your breath is very even. And your mind is completely stable. And become aware of yourself as the soul you're in your imperishable stage. You are the soul inside this pure, beautiful light. And now 
you're going to attract the soul that you want to serve to you with a very pure thought. So first, as a soul, connect to Baba. Turn your attention up. Connect with that current from him. And the current will have whatever quality you are going to use to attract this soul. So if you're attracting with courage, then it's the, it's the current of courage. If you're attracting with peace, then it's Baba's current of peace. So you're connecting with his Sakash. So it comes from Baba to you. And now from you to that soul, and you are invoking that soul. So pull that soul right in front of you. So you can see, you're really seeing the light inside the soul, right? You're really seeing the light in the forehead, the drishti from this soul. And just take a minute and share this Sakash with that soul who's in front of you right now. Sustain that loving connection for just another few moments. Now release them with love and let them go back where they were. So how did you do? Those of you I can see, let me know. Did you, were you able to do it or kind of or yeah, able to do it? Yeah. Okay. So let's, let's do one more time because this is how he tells us we're going to serve now when we can't go find them. And actually he tells us this is our most powerful service. So now you know the routine, right? You're going to get still and you all know how to do this very well. You're gonna go inside, check your heart, make sure your heart is completely at peace. Check your mind, your mind is stable. Check your intellect, it's loving. Now turn your attention up to Baba. You're pulling the current from Baba that you're going to serve with. Maybe it's love or confidence or trust whatever it is, you're pulling that current from Baba to you. And now with your divine intellect, you tap that soul ever so lightly and pull them in front of you. So you're seeing a face, but more than the face, you're seeing the light inside. That's really what's shining through. And what's coming from you is that Sakash from Baba. So you keep your thought completely pure, no wanting, no desires, and you just serve that soul. And let's just serve that soul for about a minute. Ready? Release them with love and let them return. Was that easier? 
than the first time? Yeah. You know, I'm remembering an experience in Gita Ben. I don't know if you were in the room at that moment or not, but, um, or maybe I even heard about it, and maybe I heard about it through you, Gita, but uh, they were trying to get Dadi Golzar to go to see Dadi Janki. This was Nilu Ben. And this was recent. This was in the last six to eight months. And they're saying, don't you want to go to Madhavan? Don't you want to travel? And of course, Dottie's pretty fragile. So she's not indicating too much one way or the other. And they played a little audio of Dottie Janky saying, come, come, come see me, etc." And at a certain point, Dottie Gulzar closed her eyes for a minute or two. And when she opened them, and Ilubin said, don't you want to go see Daddy Janki? She said, I just did. So this, we're not talking about imagining, right? This isn't about making something up. This is about your actual power to pull Baba Sakash and invoke those souls, serve a soul without ever going there physically. And this is so useful because sometimes we might have something difficult that's happened with someone. We don't know what to say, or the relationship has gotten a little tangled. And so when that's the case, it's even more important that we can serve like this. Serve them, serve them, serve them. The key is that your thoughts are completely pure. That you don't want anything from them. You're just, just giving. Yeah? Okay, so, so we understand what power is. This, we're beginning to get into this territory where Baba starts by saying, this is what it means to be powerful. It means that you can go in one second. You can serve in one second. You can destroy a negative thought in one second. That's what power looks like. Now, he... He then begins to talk with us about how do we become powerful? And he says, well, he starts out by saying, well, you are currently stars of hope, which is very sweet, but what it means is we're not there yet, right? Stars of hope means we hope to be powerful. So he said, you're stars of hope, but you're going to be stars of success. So he's telling us, you're here, but you're going to go here. And so he says, um, he says, I'm going to talk about two kinds of power and two kinds of light. So he says, there's a searchlight and there's a lighthouse. So we all know what a lighthouse is, right? I mean, the lighthouse is sending rays. It reaches very far and wide. It helps a lot all at once. But a searchlight is like a specific light. And Baba used to talk about how he would wake up early in the morning if he knew one of the children needed help, and he would use his searchlight to give them help. So Baba says, the searchlight is willpower, and the lighthouse is wide power. So willpower and wide power. So willpower is very focused and wide power is very broad. So he said, if you're going to be able to use wide power, you have to start by turning the searchlight on yourself. You have to go inside and look at what's going on inside. And he said, at this time, we have to have unlimited vision and attitude, which is what we just practiced when we brought the soul in front of us, right? Our vision for them is unlimited. We don't want anything. We don't have any desires. We didn't serve them by saying, um, uh, you come in front of me and I'm going to tell you what I want you to do. You know, I want you to go back to college or 
you know, stop dating that girl or whatever. We didn't do that. We just sent them pure, pure love. And that's what he's saying. With that searchlight, you're invoking in yourself this unlimited capacity, this unlimited vision, this unlimited attitude. You're just loving. You're just giving. That's it. You're just serving them. Now, um, he talked about a practice that... Um, that he comes back to later in the Merle. And this is really an important practice. He talks about sitting in one place and touring around the unlimited, forging a relationship with every soul in the world. Now I'm gonna tell you a story. In 2014, Dottie Janke was very sick that year. And I went to India five times to see her all over the place. I went to Ahmedabad, I went to Madhuban, I went to Mumbai um, to visit her over and over. And one of the times in July, um, I arrived and uh, Brother Neville from London arrived at the same time. Neither of us knew the other one was coming. And I'll spare you the details of the story, but as we were preparing to leave after three or four days, um, Dottie looked very good. She was sitting up and she was very bright. And she looked at Brother Neville and she said, you're not from London. And she looked at me and she said, and you're not from America. And then she looked back at Neville and she said, and those children, they're not your children. And then she started going like this. And she said, we're up here. We're not connected to a country or a city or a family. We're up here. We're connected to God and we're flying. We're touring around the world. And many times after that, between then and when she finally left the body, I would sit with her and she would do that. And I know Gita will remember this. She would just do this. She'll point up and she'll do this motion with her hand and she's signaling something she's not just making it up she's signaling something she's telling us this stage in which we can serve and this is again an aspect of power and baba says in this merely look if you only want to serve in one place if you can only serve in this uh, this particular pashala or this particular center or this particular library or whatever, then your kingdom is very tiny. He said, at this time, what you have to do is connect me and tour around the world in that stage. So connect to me and tour around. And as you're touring around, now this is more like the lighthouse, right? As you're touring around, make connection with every soul so what are you doing you're you're sending these rays you're connected you're in soul consciousness you're connected to baba you're sending out these rays to every soul in the world this is the stage he wants us to be able to maintain you know, Sister Mohini said recently, I don't know, are you watching her talks every night? She's, she's got these two hours a night, right? And in one of them, she said, if there's anyone I've known in my life, anyone I've ever met, they will come in front of me at certain points. I'll think of them and send them love. And you know what, she said, they just kind of come and then they go. So it's like we don't know who we're serving, right? It doesn't even matter. We're, we, our commitment is then that's what the Shakti is doing. The Shakti is connected with Shiva. The Shakti is sending. And whoever needs what we're sending, they take that benefit. So he talks about this as a really important practice, and he comes back to this. Now, he knows it's not so easy why, why isn't it so easy? What happens to us? Well, you can't answer because you're all on mute. But <laughs> if, you, if you could, what you, what, the reason we can't do this so easily is that we get stuck. 
right? We get stuck. We, we get pulled to people. We get pulled to jobs. We get pulled to service. We get pulled to our old nature. Something pulls us and down we come. Instead of being up here, we're like that balloon. Now we're just walking. It's like we're at the mall, right? We're no longer serving. So he said, you have to develop a stage of unlimited disinterest. Unlimited disinterest. And then he tells us how to do that. Now, I want you in your mind, we're going to do a little thing. We're going to do exactly what he told us. So in your mind, I want you to get quiet again. You're going to have to do this as a soul because you can't do it as a body right now. So as a soul, get very quiet. And you just got a message from Baba that you have to come to Marban right now. You not only have to come to Madhuban, you have to move to Madhuban. You have to be a Madhuban Debasi. So in your mind, I want you to go into your room and unpack two days of clothes. Each of you gets a little cloth bag. You get two days of clothes. And now I want you to take that bag, walk out the door of your place. Don't clean your house. Don't send out a vacation responder on your email. Don't do anything. Put a little bit of money in your pocket. Take your two days of clothes. Walk out the door. Lock the door and take yourself to Madhavan. So imagine you're arriving at the gate of Madhavan. Here's the Madhavan Navasis. They're welcoming you. They're so glad you've come. They, Baba said you were coming. So they bring you in, they put you in a room, and you're not going to go back home. This is your new service place. And so Baba said, you are in Madhavan, you are with the divine family. So you look around, you know those Madhavan Navasis, you've seen them before. You are in renunciation. You're not thinking about your home and anything you didn't do. It's completely out of your mind. You're doing tapasya. So you pick your place. Maybe you're in the history hall. Maybe you're at the Tower of Peace. Maybe you're in Baba's room. Maybe you're at Baba's hut. But you're in tapasya. And once again, once your tapasya stage is strong, you are serving. That's unlimited disinterest, he said. You don't allow your thoughts to go back and think about what you didn't get around to or any relationship you didn't fix. You don't go there. He said, you're residents of Madhavan, you belong in the divine family, and this is your task. Can you feel what that would feel like? To be so, so disinterested in your life, your old life. So, so liberated in your life so connected to him that you go instantly and, that, and you accept that, that assignment, you might say, that invitation. This is the consciousness he wants us to have. So each time he gives us one of these, one of these experiments, whether it's serving the world or it's uh, bringing souls in front of us or the hot air balloon I gave you, each of those things is an is an exercise in power. Each of these is, is about how do we become powerful? How do we attain the stage that he's asking us to attain to do the service he wants us to do? So unlimited disinterest. And once you have that stage of unlimited disinterest, then you can do what he's asking you to do then you, you can be quite powerful. Now, 
he said, when I'm looking at you, I see the bondages that tie you. And he said, some of them are thick ropes. Some of them are thin ropes. Some of them are thick threads. And some of them are weak threads. And he said, whatever they are, whether you have thick ropes or you have weak threads, you still have to break them, right? Because even a weak thread will pull you back. Even a weak thread will tug you back. So when you're starting to soar, when you're starting to go to Madhavan to move in as a, as a Navasi, or you're starting to pull a soul in front of you, when you're starting to do what a Shakti does, that thread will pull you back and you won't be able to fly. So he's saying, you can't have those. You can't have those bondages. Now we get attached to all kinds of things, right? We, we get attached to our own nature, our own way of being. Well, I'm always the one who brings the food or I'm always the one who organizes or I'm always the one who uh, pulls everyone together or whatever. We get attached to that. So if someone else steps in to do that, we can get our feelings hurt. That's attachment. Or we can get attached to coarse people, even things, little things, even, even yoga things. What happens if someone comes and they come into your house and they say, I'm going to take your picture of Brahma Baba. <laughs> right? What happens? Do you say, okay, I'm really worshiping the angel anyway. I mean, I'm in love with the angel. I don't need the picture. Or do you say, no, don't take that. Don't take that picture. I've had that picture for 40 years. I don't want you to take that picture. We get attached to all kinds of things. We get attached to a certain kind of food. I like the kitchery that this one makes. So if someone else makes kitchery, I say, well, why is it white? Why isn't it yellow? Well, I don't make mine with turmeric. Oh, well, you know, I ought to be okay. Whatever, however, thank you for the kitchery. I don't care if it's yellow or it's white. I don't care what you serve me for lunch. I don't care if I got to do the same service job. Someone brings you a korta and you say, that's not the kind I wear. I don't really like that kind, right? We do that a thousand ways. We do these little things where we attach, 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 attach. And he's saying all of that clips your wings. All of that brings you down. So when we turn that searchlight inside, we're looking at that. To what degree? He says, this is freedom. He said, this is really what freedom is. Freedom's not I get to do whatever I want. Freedom is, can I go in an instant to be that Madhuban Nibasi? Can I move beyond that bondage? If I don't, if the thing that usually happens doesn't happen, can I be okay with it? Last week at Peace Village, they said, okay, everyone, plan on the same service assignments that you had last week. So I said in my head, okay, I was on phones Thursday morning and I cooked Thursday afternoon. So the schedule came out, it had me cooking Friday. I went stomping over to the scheduler, what happened? I thought you said I was cooking on Thursday afternoon. Where was my surrender, right? Oh, Friday night, no problem, right? This is the kind, these are the bonds that were clipping, clipping, clipping. And now is the time. Look at the signals. This is not a normal time. The bells are starting to ring. The drums are beating. We have to do this piece of work. He told us this 50 years ago. 1970, 50 years ago. So here we are. And now we really have to be serious. So when he says that you need to clip these bondages, whether it's a thick rope, or it's a fine, thin thread, we have to go beyond that. We would be so sad if we got to the end and we realized that our attachments had limited us from who we wanted to be. We would be so disappointed. He talks about the remorse that we'll feel. We thought, oh my gosh, I would have let that get between me and who I wanted to be. It would be such a sad feeling. So we don't want to let that happen. 
So it's really worth looking at this point that he's making here about what it is that really makes us free. Now, when he gets to the end of the Merle, he talks about how Shaktis serve. And he's not talking about uh, cooking or cleaning or doing programs or making speeches, giving lectures, giving talks, doing Zoom. He's not talking about any of that, right? He's talking about what we can do based on the power that we've accumulated inside. So he says, if we're going to he takes it back to the idol from the beginning. And he said, all people want is a glimpse, right? They want darshan. They just want to look at this idol and get the, get the good feeling. And he said, that's what you have to do for them. They're not all going to get on planes and fly to India and walk by temples and get darshan from those idols. They need to get that darshan from you. And they need to get it once you're liberated again on the sidewalk, in the grocery, whatever, whatever, whatever. I mean, wherever someone encounters you, they need to have that vision of you. But for them to have that experience of you, you have to have no desires. This is a stage he calls being ignorant of desires. You don't want anything. You don't want anything from them, but you don't want anything full stop. It's not that you'll be able to serve once you have the service assignment you need, or once you have a better place to serve, or once you have a car that's more reliable, or once you have uh, better money in the bank and a better security. It's not that then when those things are in place, I'll be able to serve, or when my children move out, or when my children move in, or whatever, whatever, none of that. He said, you have to be in a stage that is ignorant of desires. You don't want anything. And to not want anything means that you feel completely full of all attainments. You're just feeling, thank you. Thank you. Baba, thank you that, I, that I'm in your clan. Thank you that I get to hear this Merle every day. Thank you that you filled me with these qualities, that you've shown me what, what beauty, moral beauty looks like, that you've shown me these dadis, that you've put me in a school for angels. Thank you, thank you, thank you. I'm so grateful that I've got this this knowledge and this awareness of what it is I need to do right now. It's that attitude of having all attainments that makes you not want anything. I mean, what could we possibly want that anybody else has? I mean, we know where this is headed, right? Bob has told us for how many years that this is what it's going to look like, and now we're getting here and we're seeing this is what it's going to look like. So all we want is to be like him. All we want is to be useful to him. All we want is for him to help us serve, show us, put in front of us, whatever service it is we need to do so that we can fill our own account and be useful to the yagya, to time, to people. So we don't want anything. And in that state, he calls it being a great Gyani soul, a Maha Gyani soul, Maha Gyani Atma. So he's saying, when you are a great Gyani soul, then you are a Mahadani. Automatically. Because great Gyani soul, a Maha Gyani soul, isn't someone who's taken great notes in Merle class. The Maha Gyani soul is someone who has become that, right? Who has imbibed those virtues. I'm a Mahagyani soul when I am as courageous as he tells me I am, when I am as patient. Daddy Janki used to talk about the five virtues. She would say, you start with purity and then truth 
and then patience, maturity, she actually had six, maturity, humility, and sweetness. So when that is our nature, when anyone who's around us experiences us to be so patient, so lovely, so humble, so sweet, that's service. Even if you never open your mouth, even if you forgot to bring blessings with you, even if you don't have any tolly or an almond to give them, you're giving them the vibrations of those virtues that you have accumulated in your study. And now you are a Mahadani soul. You are giving to them. And they are in front of you and they want darshan, right? Help me, I'm feeling heavy, lift me up. And that's what you're doing. With your vision of them, you're lifting them up. They're probably not gonna come to the center and start Merle class. They're probably just not strong enough to do that or maybe that's not their fortune, but they still need whatever you have to share. So this is what he's talking about with the Shaktis. And then he returns to this business about you touring around the world. So once again, you go inside, you're soul conscious, you're connected up to Shiv Baba, you're taking that current, your light, just like Daddy Janki with her finger circling around, you're circling around the world, you're giving vibrations, you're connecting with every soul, that's your service and you don't need to leave home to do that. It's perfect for COVID-19. It's exactly the service we're set up to do right now. The final thing he says, and then I'll see if you've got anything you wanna share, any questions. He said, when you are doing this, so when you are Gyani, when you are Mahadani, when you are soul conscious, when you are touring around, they will look at you and they will just see light. And he said, it's not even just in the head and the forehead that they'll see light. They will see light instead of seeing your body. He said, they will look at you and what they'll experience is just light. And he said, and then they will become light. So this, this is power. Hmm? Here's what it means to be a Shakti. So let me be quiet. I've been talking for almost an hour. What thoughts do you have? What questions do you have? What experiences? Because you are on, on mute, so you can just open you and you can ask. Uh, Om Shanti, I have a question. Um, like you said, searchlight and lighthouse. So is it like uh, uh, when we are uh, just uh, giving Sakash to one soul, it is like a searchlight. And when you give it to the whole world, it's a lighthouse form of us. I think that's a nice way to think of it. He... The way he started was with that particular section of the Merle, he said, you start with turning that searchlight on yourself. So you serve the self. And you know, I see so many Brahmins, even like old, old Brahmin instruments who are so busy out there, but they're not serving the self. You know, you have to make yourself strong so you can do the other. So he said, turn the searchlight on yourself. And he called that searchlight will power. He said it's willpower. So it's willpower if it's served on, if it's turned on you, but it's also willpower if it's turned on someone else. So when you bring someone in front of you, you're turning a light on them, right? And that's willpower. But it's, it's the power of whatever you want that soul to be receiving. Strength, courage, um, patience, uh, understanding, whatever, tolerance, whatever you're sending to that soul, not because you want anything back, but because you know that's what they need right now, that is also a searchlight. Now, the touring around, this is like a lighthouse, right? 
At this point, you're connected to the divine, you're emanating those rays of light and everyone is served with that. And when we do this United Yoga Bhati, which for you all is 4.30 in the morning, is that it, or 3.30, <laughs> some really early hour. But that's the idea, is that all of us connecting with Baba and we're all sending. This is unity, right? He's told us before, unity isn't when I, I make myself like the person next to me, unity is when we're all looking in the same direction. So yeah, searchlight and then lighthouse. Thank you. And even when you said that, you know, bring one soul in front of you and uh, give them the uh, power by connecting with Baba. I had a friend in mind and I sent peace to her. And the second time when I was doing, I could see a smiling face of hers. Isn't it amazing? Really, you realize what he's talking about is quite literal. It's not like imagination. It's quite literal. We can bring them. I wouldn't be surprised if that friend says something to you that signals you that he or she got that from you. But it doesn't always happen, but it could. What else? Uh, on the same note, I would also share something. Um, when you were doing that exercise, I had got a soul who's been wanting to uh, come to Baba, but somehow the time hasn't come and she starts the course each time she does two classes and the third class she falls off. So I don't know. So I was uh, emerging her and then... Um, uh, just now, I happened to see her message saying that uh, I don't know what you were doing, but I felt that you were blessing me. My, that's pretty quick. Yeah. yeah. So instantly. Yeah. Huh? yeah. So that was kind of wonderful. So I thought that's of wonderful. sharing. Yeah. Thank wonderful. you. Yeah. Thank you for sharing that. Anyone else? Any other questions? Anyone? I guess. Uh, if not anybody, then can I just uh, ask one more? Yeah. Um, yeah, when you said, like, pack your bags and go to Madhuban, I did go out of the house, but then I had behind my mind, Oh, but I have not told my daughter I'm going there. <laughs> that's what happens, isn't it? That's so that's the attachment, right? right? That's the attachment. And it's so helpful to know that, right? Even if it's a little thin, weak thread, it's like that's what he's saying. This is the practice. You just go. Because Baba said, when I, when I give you a touching, you're just going to get it like that. You're not going to get a big, long email from, from him, right? You're not going to get a letter in the mail. No one's going to come to the door, ring the doorbell, and say, okay, you've got a week and a half. Get your act together here, right? It's going to be like this. And so the practice is, can I have unlimited disinterest? Number one, I have one connection. I have one focus. He's the only thing that matters right now. Love to everybody else. That's that lighthouse. Love, and that'll include your daughter. You know, love to everybody, but... This is the one who I'm responding to right now because that's the moment we're in. This is not a normal time. And there's only God right now for us. And we know, I mean, when, when he signals us, whether it's a Merle we get on a certain day or it's something that comes in Amrit Vela or a thought or whatever, a touching. So it's very useful to have that happen. And now you get to cut that little, <laughs> that little thread a little better. Beautiful. Do you all want to close with a little meditation together? You want to take yeah. two or three minutes and just be in silence together? Yeah. It was lovely to be with you. Would you like to give a commentary? I feel, you know, I can do a little bit, but I think mainly what we need together is silence. So let's, let's sit quietly and let's, first, let's just have a thought of appreciation. It's been very nice to be with you. Thank Baba for bringing us together. And then let's turn inside. And let's emerge the Shakti within. So Baba said, we're already loving. We don't need to 
work too much on that. It's a bit of our nature at this time. But let's emerge our power. This is the power to destroy a weak thought or a negative thought in a second. It's the power to invoke a soul in front of us to serve them with our pure thought. It's the power of unlimited disinterest. Bryn Marban in a second. And Tapasya, serving. And it's the power to tour around the world, making a contact with every so, so this is what the world needs from us, and so this is our practice. Om Shanti. Om Shanti, thank you. Om Shanti, thank you. Om Shanti. Om Shanti. Have a lovely day. Did all of you enjoy the class? Yes. Of course. Yes. 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 Come to Peach Village yes. and play. A lot of okay. confirmations. I'm sure a lot of people have received confirmations of what to do and how to serve. And service is not just physical, but also on an emotional, on a subtle level. So I'm sure all of um, everyone got those details down. Thank you, Sister Judy. Yes, thank Good you. Time. Love to you, Vinu, and the family. Take care. Thank you. Om, 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 Om Shanti. Thank you, Sister Judy. Um, what we do usually is we record all of our classes and we upload them on our YouTube channel. Um, it's Los Angeles Brahma Kumaris. So with your consent, we will upload this video as well. So a lot more people um, will be able to, you know, enjoy um, the sessions, the classes. Within two weeks, we got almost 750 or 730 followers. <laughs> Isn't it amazing that if we were serving in our center, we would never serve 750? Yeah. And in... Um, Last weekend, we had um, sessions with Suraj Bhai on Saturday and with Raju Bhai on Sunday. So what we did was we even hosted it live on Facebook and in Zoom because capacity is less, but in Facebook, because I was constantly just watching, more than 4,000 people were watching. It's amazing. It's wow. amazing. It's a wonder this time. We could never have predicted it, could we? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. All right. Also using its service. <laughs> Thank you, Ben. Thank you so much. All right. Thank you all. Have a wonderful day. Om Shanti. Bye bye. <laughs>